Today, let's deactivate an Airbus A320 engine thrust reverse for flight. Let's go. Welcome, this is Aircraft Engineered and today we are working on an Airbus A320 with IAE V2500 engine fitted. Our mission for today is to deactivate the engine thrust reverse system for flight. So after our job setup is done as per our aircraft maintenance manual, we need to open our engine fan cowls to access the thrust reverse hydraulic control unit. So our fan cowl is open now and uh, this is our fan cowl and this is our HCU, the thrust reverse hydraulic control unit and its lockout pin. So in this point it's in a activated position. So now we need to deactivate it. So the HCU is uh, mounted on the pylon. So it's right on top of the engine and uh, top of position. So right now we remove the pin from its storage position and then we move the lever to the deactivated position and then we insert the pin to lock it out in the deactivated position. So this is how it looks when it's uh, deactivated. So you can see that's uh, the pin and the lever is on the deactivated position. So our HCU now is officially deactivated which actually means the hydraulic uh, system has been cut off from the thrust reverser. So the hydraulics are the ones that actuate the thrust reverser itself through the HCU. So once we deactivate the um, HCU, we cut off the hydraulics from the thrust reverser. So when we do the step, we need to make sure that we inspect the condition of the pin and we need to make sure that the pin is installed fully and installed properly. So now with the HCU locked out, let's move on to the next step of our thrust reverser deactivation process. Next, we close and lock the fan cowl and then we need to measure the distance between the fan cowl and the thrust reverser cowl. This gap in there and make sure it's within. So the, the next step now is to uh, lock out our thrust reverser translating sleeves. This is done by means of a lockout pin. So now we'll remove the third red cap from the lockout assembly. After we remove the cap, we need to inspect the alignment between the holes of the translating sleeve and the lockout assembly and make sure they are aligned. If they are not aligned, we need to make sure we make the adjustment before we install the pin. So now let's take out the pin from its storage. To unscrew our lockout pin from storage, we use an Allen key. After it's loose, we just uh, take it out. So these are both our thrust Vista lockout pins and plugs and this is how they look like. The pins are painted in red for visibility so that when they are installed during walk around the crew can see that the engine thrust reverser is deactivated. So now let's prepare the pins for installation. So now to do that we first of all clean the threads using MEK method ethyl ketone then after that we apply a light coat of anti-seize on the threads. So here we go. The unthreaded portion of the pin is supposed to go all the way into the lockout assembly while the threaded portion is supposed to thread onto the translating sleeve. That's why it's important to make sure that the holes are aligned, otherwise the pin won't be installed properly. So now let's go into the our final step of our deactivation process to install the lockout pin. So now we make sure it goes in through and whenever you have any issues in aligning the pin or engaging the first threads of the pin by hand, Please check for alignment. So after that, we give some final turns with an Allen key to make sure the pin is fully threaded in. And then we take our threaded uh, blanking caps and install them back onto our pin storage. And then this is how our pin is supposed to look like. And then after that, we just get some uh, a rag and just clean off our anti-seize uh, and make sure that the area is nice and clean. So we we'll also re repeat the same process on the other side since we've got two translating sleeves on the engine. So this is on the input side. We also do the same procedure on the output side. So after that process, process is complete, our thrust reverser is now mechanically deactivated. After this, our next step is to hop into the cockpit and do an operational test of the LVDTs just to make sure that the LVDTs on the deactivated thrust reverser are working properly. Finally, we go to the MCDU again to change the inhibition status of the thrust reverser from not inhibited to inhibited. So when you turn on the FADEC on the inhibited uh, thrust reverser engine, this is the message you are supposed to get. With this message, our thrust reverser deactivation process is complete. 
Thank you so much for watching. Like and follow for more. Ciao.